Hello and welcome. My name is Ellen Knutson. I am the curator of the Book Arts Collection in Special Collections at the University of Florida. And I am also the instructor for Book Arts and Letterpress in the School of Art and Art History. Um, I'm gonna show you guys today how to create a tunnel book. And I'm gonna, or one of the ways, there's multiple ways you could do it, but I'm gonna show you um, one of my ways of doing that. And I'm also a book artist. I wanted to talk about my work a little bit so you kind of know uh, what I do and where I'm coming from. So I teach and work at the University of Florida in special collections and in the School of Art and Art History, as I said. And I also operate Crooked Letter Press, which is the name of my imprint where I make letterpress printed artist books. So in the upper left corner, you see Ingress Egress, which is a book about artist books, about graphic design, typography, and sort of the language of an artist book, the environment of an artist book. At the upper right corner, you see Self Dual. That is a book that is based on a journey between two locations, University of Alabama in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and Starkville, Mississippi, uh, when I was a graduate student at Alabama. That's what that book is about. In the lower right, uh, lower, excuse me, lower left corner um, is Talisman. That is my most recent work, and it is about um, the feelings of isolation of an artist during tumultuous times, um, something that probably a lot of people who are artists know about in the present moment. And in the lower right corner is Intrusion. And that is a book about the environment and the human intrusion on the natural world and the effects of, of human life on the natural world and how we are not striking a good balance in that, in that realm. Um, so, but today, this is just to give you a kind of a sense of the work that I make and where I'm coming from. And then what I'm going to do today is show you guys how to make a tunnel book, as I said, and I'm going to show you simple steps. You should, if you're doing this video from the University of Florida libraries, you should have a packet of these materials. But if you don't, if you have come across this video and you're interested in doing this, um, you can still do it and you can get materials and that's with that little handout at the top. And, I, and there should be a link to uh, download this diagram about how to make it. It's not gonna give you the exact steps, but you could watch the video, just prepare your materials from this handout and uh, get ready to make it. So I think you're gonna have a good time doing this. It's really, really simple, uh, straightforward, and you there's a lot of possibilities. So I'm gonna show some examples before I do the tutorial so that you can kind of see what's possible, a little bit of what's possible. It's uh, some of my own tunnel books that I've made for my class and then some of the work that students have made over the years, just a few of them, so you can kind of see what's possible. And uh, hang in there, it's gonna be great. And I'll be right back to show you some examples, okay? Thanks. All right, so you should have your materials ready. And you should have gotten in your kit four pages that are seven inches wide and they have circles in them that are incrementally smaller. And then you have two pages that are six inches wide. One of them has a circle, it's the largest circle. And then the other piece that is six inches wide is uh, no cuts there. It's just a solid panel. And that is the last page of the tunnel book. So that's what you're going to see when you put it together. Oops, yeah, is like this. And I can't jog them up together, but you kind of get an idea because they're not the same size, they're the same height, but not the same width. But you kind of get a sense of what's going to happen there. OK, so that's, a, that's what you should have. And then you should have two long strips that are five and a half inches tall and then 16 inches wide. And we're going to fold those up into a concertina. But first, and you need a glue stick. Um, I think that's about all you need because you don't need scissors, you don't need any of that. You might need something to score with, like an X-Acto knife. You can use the back of an X-Acto knife or anything that's um, not sharp. I mean, I have special tools for this kind of thing. Um, that's like a scoring nib there. The other side of this is a punch. And the other side is dull like that. So if you have something like that, that's rounded, um, but you could use a paper clip, uh, just a, you know, a folded up paper clip and you could score with that. That's a good suggestion because everybody probably has that, a, a rounded paper clip. 
Um, before I get into making the book, though, I, I want to show you guys some examples. So I have a few here. Now, these are put into a case. This part that you see here, this is we are not making, um, but this is a, a, a case. And the tunnel book is aside. We're going to make this part. So this is an example of sort of a space looking image. And I just want you to see that, you know, we did something really simple with circles uh, because that's straightforward. You know, you can cut even if you are doing this without um, the kit, you could get pieces of paper cut to the right size and then cut your own circles. They just need to be incrementally smaller and don't cut the back panel. So you just, you know, I used four inches and then I went down a quarter inch each time until I got to the back panel and I didn't cut anything. So you could cut your own shapes and you, they don't have to be circles. You can cut squares or diamonds. Um, so here's one that a student made that I love. And it's sort of an undersea tunnel book. You can see all these fish and creatures and corals and things like that. So that's quite lovely. This is another one that I did that has some decorated paper. It has a gelatin print on the front and sort of a reference to the coral here. And then you can see this is a, a just incrementally smaller, just all the way back until that last panel that's not cut. And so you can see I punched some holes in there. I used pre-printed papers and different things. So you can do that. Oh yeah, this is another one that I've done that is sort of like a machine gears. This one has a little flap that opens and closes and reveals part of the tunnel on one side and the other. So you can see that has some patterned paper in it back there and stuff like that. This is another one from a student, which I love this one because it's a person. So this took some planning to really figure out how to, what to cut out of each panel. But I just think that's really nice. And this is probably my favorite that a student has ever made. And it's just that open mouth like that with the teeth and the throat and the tongue and it's great. So I love that one a lot. So you can do, you can cut shapes, you can cut shapes and then glue things to the edges. You can do all kinds of things, but I'm just gonna show you how to make a simple one. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna start by just folding down the concertina. So what you do is you take your concertina and the kit that you guys got, it might already be folded in half, which is fine. So if that long sheet is folded in half, it'll look like this. And that's perfectly fine if that's folded to make a smaller kit uh, that might have happened. Um, so anyway, you'll take the folded one and then we're gonna keep folding it in half and we're gonna get to where we have one inch little strips that are folded up. So I fold and then I fold again to the inside of that, that first crease. And a lot of times what I'll do to fold, and I'm really just trying to make folds right now. I'm not real worried about which direction they're going. I think this paper is on the wrong grain, but that's all right. Um, then I cut this. I think I said cut, not fold. Sorry, I'm thinking ahead to what, it, what we're going to do. Okay, so I folded three folds, the center one and then two on each side. And now I'm going to keep doing that. So I'll take this end and I'll go to this fold. Take your time doing it. And then, so now I've got to fold like an interior one. So the way I'll do that is I usually fold it back and meet that line with that fold. So it's like, it's like this and I'm taking this fold and I'm gonna meet this next one. And then what I'm actually folding is underneath. So the crease I'm making is underneath the paper there but it's just easier to line up that way. This one, I can go ahead and fold up here like this. And then I can take this one. So it, there's no, you know, I just have my way of doing it. However, your folding is up to you. But the one thing I will say is don't double up your paper. 
like just do a single fold at a time. Don't like take it in half and then try to fold the whole thing at once because you won't get nice folds. You won't get the correct measurement. So just you're doing single folds. And that's another one that's underneath there. And I just keep going through. So I kind of did one half. I didn't really set out to do that. But that's okay. It doesn't matter. Whatever order you do it, you just kind of keep folding until you reach those one inch increments like this. So this one's all ready. That one's folded, but then I'll have to reverse some of those folds for the concertina, but that's fine. Just keep folding. We're almost done. And one more right here at the end. I just want to make sure it's not overlapping anywhere that it's straight. So I did that rather quickly. If you're not doing it as fast as me, you can always pause and catch back up. So it's, it's no big deal. You can always start again. So what I need to do is now just gather this up. So this side is sort of already doing it. So it's just a zigzag fold. So one will go this way, the opposite way, this way, that way. You just keep folding it up. And so here on this side, because I was the way I was doing it, they're not back and forth already, but that's fine, easily fixable. So then that's what it's gonna look like. And you're gonna have this concertina like that. Okay, so you're gonna fold the other one exactly the same way I'm going to pause and do that because I don't think I need to do that twice. You can just watch this again if you need to do it again. Um, so I'm going to pause, fold this one, and then come back and I'll show you how to put the rest of the book together. Okay. Okay. So we're back. And I folded up the two concertinas like this. And now what I need to do, I'm going to go ahead and do this step since we're here with the concertina. I'm going to cut off four folds because we need to have 12. So one, two, three, four. And I'm going to take my ruler and my X-Acto and just cut that. Make sure you get only cutting off four. One, two, three, four. And then one, two, three, four. And I'm turning it over so that I can get my ruler right up against it, the fold like that. Three, four. Just double check, triple check. Be sure I don't mess that up. Okay. Okay, so now I can put those to the side out of my way. And this is how the book's going to get put together, but we're not there yet. So, all right. So now I can come to these pages. This is the pages. So the first and last page is already ready and cut to size. So that's the, the one that doesn't have any cuts in it. And then the first one that has the biggest circle in it. So now I've got to score some little flaps on each side. Let me see if I can show you in one of the samples what we're getting ready to do. So you can see this first one is glued on the front. The last one is glued at the back and that's attached to the concertina. But as you can see in here, these have some little flaps that kind of tuck into the concertina right here. And that's what we've got to make is those folds on the side you can see in there. So that's what we've got to do. So just one at a time. And I usually try to set them away and then work on each one. And so what I'm gonna do, and if you have a cutting mat, you can do this. 
I'll do one like this. So I would take my little scoring tool or my paper clip. So I'm lining this up right at the edge and I need to score a half inch. So I need it to be six inches wide. This is seven inches wide right now. So I'm gonna score a half inch on each side. So I can use my cutting mat. If you have a cutting mat, I can do this. started to use the pointy side. So I could score like that. And if I don't have a cutting mat, I can do it like this. So I'm gonna just rotate it to do it on this side. So I have to do it from the right, because I'm right-handed. And I'm gonna measure with my ruler, just a half inch and make a tiny tick mark, just a little dot, real lightly. And I'll make one at one point and then move up or down a little bit. and do another one at the half inch mark. And you can see what I'm trying not to do is use the edge of my ruler as the measuring point because it can you can fluctuate where you're making the mark. And so I like to pull to an inch and then at the half inch mark, make my mark. And then I can take my ruler and just follow that mark. Usually what I'll do is I'll put my, the point of my scoring device on one of the marks and then line up on the other side. Just a little bit like that. And then I'm just gently scoring like twice. And because this is a mark, I'm actually gonna fold it on towards that mark so that the mark is covered up. And that's gonna be the way this gets put in is, I believe it's the, this is the back, this is the back of the, of the book like that. And then the other mark like that, just go ahead and fold that up. So it looks like this. So that's my first one. And then I'll just kind of go through, I'll just put it face down away from me and then take the second one. And I'm gonna go ahead and just use my cutting mat to do it it's quicker but don't forget that you can just do tick marks on each edge and I would probably do all the tick marks and then do all the scoring at once so you're not doing it each time but that's up to you and it doesn't really matter however you do that and then I'm just lining this up using the marks on my mat to make scoring marks and then folding it four of them that you have to do because the first there's six total and it's that center four that have to have folds So the pieces already being cut is a big part of the work for this project and really for artist books generally. <laughs> it's a lot of work to just prep the materials. Uh, it's definitely, this is pretty easy. This is a good little project to learn. Okay, this is the last one there. 
Okay, so there's my little set of folded pieces like this. Kind of hard to jog because they're folded and they're kind of interacting right there, but that's the way they go. And then this one's gonna go first, the green one. That's the, I mean, this is my colors. You guys might have different stuff, you probably do. And then that is gonna be my last one. Okay, I'm actually gonna take the stack and just flip them over and then push them away out of my work area because I'm ready to start putting the concertina together. So I'll grab my concertinas and they're folded up. And what I want to do is the way that they are folded, I want this last flap to be flat on the tabletop. This one to be flat on the tabletop and facing each other like that. Because what I'm going to do is glue this and put it on like that into those folds. Okay, so I'm going to, um, I like to use my glue stick and I'm gonna grab a little scrap piece of paper to put under. So if you have just like a computer printout that, um, you know, that you're, you've got uh, or mail, something from the mail, a catalog, a magazine, uh, you can use that as your scrap because we're gonna use a glue stick and it's not like it's super wet glue, but it is sticky. And I do want to make sure I get it on, uh, you know, a pretty good stretch of this. So I want to make sure I get it on the edges. So I'm going to put this paper underneath so that I'm not messing up my tabletop and getting glue on it. So I'm just going to take my glue stick and I'm just, that's the glue. And I'm just wiping it on. And I'm not, I'm not, I don't really need to make sure I'm covering every inch of it. I think it's okay to not do that. And I'm going to go ahead and do this one as well. And I'm gluing probably a half inch. Then I move that sticky stuff out of my way. I'm gonna go ahead and put my cap back on just so it won't get dried out while I'm working. And then this is my piece. And I'm gonna do them one at a time. So I'm gonna kind of fold that up just so that the fold is there and I can press into it, can push the paper into it. And I'm gonna put it into the fold, but I'm also not gonna try to crunch it in, but just kind of rest it against the fold and then center it head and tail as well. So it's even on the top and even on the bottom. And they may not be perfectly even, but you know, that's okay. And then just rub it down. Like that. And then take this other one and do the same thing. I'm just gonna, it's already gluey, so I need to be careful. But it's not like wet glue, it's that kind of dry glue of a glue stick. And then I'll put it in. And I'm kind of leaving a little bit of distance because I just don't want it to get crunched. I really try to prevent that. I'm not really perfect at that, but I try. And then rub it down because most of my glue is, you know, at the edge of that flap underneath. It's not here, it's over here. I'm going to go there. It's sticking okay. I normally don't, I'll admit that I don't normally use glue stick to glue things. But it's the most accessible kind of adhesive for us. Uh, and that is what came with the kit. So that's what I'm using. And I'm gonna, this is not sticky. So I'm gonna put a little bit more glue on now. It might take time to dry. I don't know, like I said, I'm not that familiar with glue sticks. Um, but I know ultimately it will stick and dry. Okay, so here's my stack. I'm still working from the back forward. So here's my next one. And now I wanna put glue just right on those flaps. And I'm gonna see if I can do it without having to use that, because they're kind of floating up. Let's see if I can kind of just put my fingers under it, like put my thumb underneath and run that glue stick. Oh, you can see what I'm doing. I'm just kind of running the glue stick down that fold. And I think I'm gonna to try to do this one at a time. And you can see, I don't know if you can see in the camera. There, that's about how much glue, I'm, so I'm not like coating it, but I'm just trying to make sure there's glue on there. 
So I'm kind of letting the light hit it so you can see a little sheen of that glue. And so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my next concertina, just fold it in like that, and then I'm going to put the next section in right there. So this glue is a little, you know, it's sticky, but it's not going to, as soon as you touch it doesn't, you can still move it around, you can still kind of slide it. So that's what I'm doing. And then I'm rubbing down right back here. Where it's together. And then I'm going to do the glue on this side. This is great for this. This is, I liked it better on this part using the glue stick. Okay. And on this side, I'm going to fold that in and then position this into the fold. So here's the thing that's tricky about this that I've found tricky over the years of doing this structure is it can get like a weird, oh, it popped off. Ah, see, oh no, I don't know. Let's see, well, I'll, I'll leave that alone and just work on this one. But you wanna make sure that it's flat. It's just, it's kind of hard to do. It's, it's maybe impossible, I don't know. So let me come back to this one, hopefully that'll stay. Be able to do that with this glue because it's, I don't know, it's kind of finicky. I'll put that back down. I'm not, now I'm like, I don't want to worry too much about that. <laughs> but this is what I'm talking about. You can get kind of a ripple across the top or the bottom if it's not even all the way, like all the way forward in the concertina as we're doing this. So just be aware it, and you know the first one you make may not be the most perfect tunnel book you ever make and that's okay i think i want to use a bone folder for this and i'll show you what a bone folder is normally this is the kind of bone folder that you're going to see it looks like this and it's usually made from a cow bone um and i like these they're great for burnishing and for rubbing things down, but they tend to leave a little sheen on a piece of paper, like, um, let's see if I can get it, like on this little scrap. Yeah, you can really, you can definitely see what I'm talking about. That's good. Okay, so you see the example. This is a Teflon bone folder here. And when I rub with this, you know, you see a pressure mark, but you don't see a shiny mark like that. So that's the disadvantage of using a regular bone folder. You can do things and you would just put paper on top of what you want to bone fold to make sure that it doesn't get that shiny mark on the real paper or the finished paper. But with a Teflon folder, and you could Google that and look them up, they're more expensive. But if you got into doing this, you would definitely want to invest in them because they're so useful because you can see I can burnish down and it just doesn't leave a shiny mark. So the bone folder, if you don't have something like that, I'm trying to think what you could use instead. The handle of something, uh, the handle of a spoon, like a wooden spoon, that's not bad. That would work. Uh, so if you are having problems with things sticking, just because I'm running into this, I, I'm concerned that you might. Um, you could get, you know, just use a magazine or something on top or another piece of printout, whatever it is. And just to make sure you don't get shiny marks on there, you could use a wooden spoon uh, to make, to use as your burnishing tool for, instead of a bone folder. Okay, so let's go to the next one, the blue one. So then I'm gonna just do this and put the next one on. So you just keep folding in the concertina until we get to the, the last one and I'll show you what to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that glue on here. And I guess I'll just do each one. It's a little time consuming and you know, they kind of can't speed through this, but it's okay, it's, that's the deal. Making a book is like this. And then you fold that in and put it in place. And again, try to get it back in there, but also you don't want it to get crunched up in the fold. You don't want a scraping 
sound or anything. So I'm gonna use my Teflon folder because I feel like it needs it. It needs some pressure with that glue stick. And then I'm trying not to pull that up real high, high, you know, cause I was being kind of cavalier earlier. And I think that's why it popped off. So being a little more careful here. And I'm trying to do that little check about the rippling, I'm trying to push it down as I do it. And that's a little off center to the one behind it. So I'd rather than be centered than not have a ripple. So I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna keep working that point because I'm a little worried that that's gonna be off center and I don't want the circles to not be concentric. So just leave it alone, move on. Okay, pretty good. It looks a little off, but I think it's probably okay. All right, next one. Keep on going through our stack. And it gets easier each time. It gets a little quicker because now you kind of got the method of what, how you're going to apply the glue and how you're going to put this down. So let me fold that concertina again. Put it in place. Oh, I see I have a pencil mark on there. That's okay, can erase it. Bone folding really helps, I think. Adhere that glue. So if you, the wooden spoon idea, I love, I think that's a great alternative to a bone folder if you don't have one. I don't know, maybe it wouldn't leave a mark. You know, I've never tried that. You might be able to, maybe it would do better than a bone folder in that sense. I don't know. I would err on the side of, you don't want to leave a mark, you know, so use a piece of paper, but you can test it. Test it on a little scrap piece before you do it on the real thing. With the circle, then I got the very last one. I take a second and erase that pencil mark. I'll put my glue on one side. So I'm I'm working left to right, I think, because I'm right-handed. And if you're not, that is perfectly fine. It does not matter. There's no rules about that. The order of things is, you need to keep your pages in order, but the way that you put them on is not, you can do whatever you need to do. So this is the same color. So I have to really kind of look for a second, make sure I've got it in the right spot because I kind of can't see it blends in. Just be careful of that if you have, I can't, I don't know what you guys might have because yeah, I don't have the same exact color materials, like I said, so. And then this one, so just be careful not to pop it off. a lot neater than glue like uh, PVA glue which is a white glue that's similar to Elmer's glue which is what I would normally use for things but I actually what I usually use is double stick tape 
um, and I'll put instead of everywhere that I'm putting glue, I would be putting double stick tape. And it's a it's a good quality archival double stick tape. It's not just any old double stick tape. I have to move this because it's not in the right spot. Uh, but it's very clean and dry to use double stick tape. Um, but you know, it's in a little bit of an investment uh, to buy it because it's not super cheap, but like a roll like this is probably like seven to ten dollars. It lasts a long time, but it's just something I use. And now we're at the last panel. So we've got all of these, all the, the center ones, and now we're gonna put that front one on. So the way that this works, is this was gonna get closed all the way down, all the way down, and it's gonna get glued to the very front there. So I think what the best thing to do is probably to put the glue on the, this paper at the edges, like back here, because that's what I would do with the double stick tape, is I would put it down the side like that and then put it, peel it and put it on. So again, I'll flip this over. I'm going to use this and I'm gonna go ahead and just put like a half inch on each side. I'm gonna just pick it up and rotate it. Put a half inch down each side like that. So I think it, you know, you got a little working time with this glue, it doesn't instantly dry. And Move that out of my way and make sure I don't accidentally stick stuff to it. And then one at a time, so I closed down the, both the concertinas. Oh, did I hit the camera or did I hit my table? I must have hit the camera, sorry about that. Um, sorry, there's glue on the edge and I'm just gonna wipe that off. I'm gonna grab a piece of paper and pinch it. Um, and then, so I close both the concertinas and then put one side on. And I'm just trying to get it right to the edge of that fold. And then same thing on the other side. I'm gonna spend a little time, just take a second here and maybe don't fold it down, kind of gently, but firmly. And then do the other side and line that up. I'm just trying to make sure it's not overhanging. So I'm running my finger down the side there. Seems okay. And then gently bone fold there. Oops, kind of slid back. Okay, I think we got it. So there, this is not dry, of course, but you can see that the tunnel book is done. So there you go finished tunnel books. So you can imagine, you could, uh, if you wanted to make like a jungle image or something, you could cut out some leaves and different things and vines and maybe go back through. You just, you have to kind of play around with it a little bit. You could take things in and out. That'd be fun to do is maybe have this and then see what you can add to it to make like an illustrative scene. But you can see too, you can see a little bit of the concertina, concertina right here. And, um, you know, that's because the circle is almost exactly the right size for that. Oops, this is coming apart. This stuff takes a few minutes to dry. It doesn't just dry, I guess, as fast as I thought maybe it did. It's almost dry, but it can't kind of manhandle this thing <laughs> right away. So that was my mistake, thinking I could do that. And then again, just if you have to reposition, just maybe take a second, take more time bone fold it down so it adheres and then like I said don't kind of jerk it around like I was tossing it around too much um, but I did want to talk about this so you know just be aware you could also if you do something where your you, the cutaway is coming too you know too close to your concertina you could trim that concert concertina down at this point you know it's an inch wide here because we did our strips and you could cut that to like a half inch you could just take your before you glue anything to it uh, you could trim that down so that it's because that wouldn't affect anything you wouldn't see that except inside you would see it but yeah and you can also do things like um 
I don't think I have an example of this, but you can do things where you cut into the concertina itself, like you punch holes or you can cut strips away uh, to reveal kind of the structure on the inside, which is kind of interesting. So that's an idea to think about. Um, so get, there you go, that's the tunnel book. Thanks so much for doing this video and come see us at the libraries. Thanks a lot. Okay, bye.